All right, well, next up, the, the woman you've been waiting for. Uh, the, the staff at Alma has made special arrangements to let her out tonight. But it's only a two hour pass. Matea Marcos, I'm here. to the woman who inspired me to do stand-up comedy. Her name was Henry, and she was a friend of my mother's. She had the most foul mouth I had ever heard. I was about nine years old at the time. And the ironic thing is, she had a husband, I think I can stand in these, she had a husband named Elliot, who was as soft-spoken and refined as Henry wasn't. So one day, Henry says to my mother, Elliot has to go to New York next week. And my mother says, is he going to take the train? And Henry says, get this, no, I'm going to stick a feather up his ass and he'll fly. <laughs> I was dumbstruck with admiration. <laughs> the, the sophistication, the wit, the aplomb, it was like being there when the first man stepped on the moon. <laughs> I found my role model. I knew that one day I wanted to talk like that. <laughs> but I procrastinated. In high school, I, I didn't even know what I was going to major in in college in my senior year. I didn't know where I was going to go to school. Based on my grade point average, the, uh, the school counselor thought I should forego education and <laughs> go right into a job as a motel maid. <laughs> so this was Miami Beach. <clears throat> Gave me a letter of reference for the Fountain Blue. For those of you who've studied French, that's the Fontaine Bleu. <laughs> but um get some of this shit off here. <laughs> I was an hour late for the interview, so I, how do you say in your country, I do eat. <laughs> but that's okay, because I did get to read the letter. And I have to tell you, I don't like to hold a grudge, but to this day, it still rankles. His last sentence was, Atea is an attractive young woman who really knows her way around a hotel room. <laughs> it was so unfair because I had only slept with him once. <laughs> and that was to get the letter. <laughs> I don't think I was so hurt. I remember when the kindergarten teacher wrote a comment on my report card that said, I love the language they used in the 20s. It said, Atea does not attend class frequently enough to benefit from the instruction. Would you want to walk a mile in the snow to kindergarten? <laughs> anyway, I procrastinated. I procrastinated. It's, it's something we all do, right? Oh, yeah, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, that isn't what I said. I said procrastination with a P, not an M. <laughs> now put that thing back in your pants and zip up before I... Where's security? 
I was told there'd be security. <laughs> well, we have a hook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're probably wondering what finally got me on stage tonight, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to tell you. Here's what it is. I woke up one day, I don't know why, and I said to myself, stand up comedy. What's the one essential ingredient? You gotta be able to stand, right? Okay, how much longer can I count on having this skill? I did toy with the idea for a while of uh, an entirely new genre, a lie down comedy. And let me tell you something about John Wharton. <laughs> oh, I, really, I wanted to thank him. He's the only theater owner who didn't make me sleep with him. <laughs> However, those of you who think he's such a great guy, let me tell you this. When I discussed my idea of lie down comedy with him, and I, I told him he was going to have to move my waterbed from my place in Common Fork here to the stage, in fact, he was a real putz. <laughs> he's like that. Totally uncooperative. The man is stiff. You know what I mean? And not in a good way. <laughs> How would you know? <laughs> no, no, truly. John is wonderful. And he, he told me that I did not have to have sex with him to perform here. Okay, actually what he said is, if I stopped molesting him... <laughs> Because now you've got a guy half my age in your life. Yeah, really high bar. <laughs> so anyway, the other thing that got me going was this. I read an article in The Economist, some of you have probably seen it, about Trump's new health care plan. I don't know if you know this, but uh, his plan for seniors is to get all of the old people out of the nursing homes and on the road. <laughs> yeah, doing whatever it was they did when they were younger. So naturally, I thought, get in on the ground floor ahead of the competition. I want to find myself pitted against Barbara Bush or Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> oh, God, it's, it's hard getting old, really. When I was young, all I worried about was hanging on to my virginity. Now the only thing I have worth preserving is my social security. <laughs> Time goes so fast. One day you're a sex object, the next day everyone objects to having the sex. <laughs> Walking in the Hardeen the other day with my friend Judy, and she says, Atea, can you hear me? Atea, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but your pantyhose are sagging. I said, Judy, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but I'm not wearing pantyhose. <laughs> I think I'm molting. <laughs> so much for my shot at death with dignity. <laughs> looking at my hands lately. I don't mind the liver, but how come no one told me about the bacon and onions? <laughs> That's some days. Other days, my right hand looks like the map of the road between Mecca and Medina, and my left hand looks like Route 66 between Chicago and Texas, with brown spots for the cities and blue for the waterways. <laughs> That's the Mississippi. My tide. That's just the hands. I haven't even gotten to the face. <laughs> I've looked into facial surgery, but it's so expensive. So what I did is I got a bowl of black cloth, and I gave it to my seamstress, and I said, whip up a burqa for me. <laughs> I'm telling you, those Muslim women are so smart, so great with time management. A little bit of mascara, a little liner, they're good to go. It's <laughs> <laughs> really beautiful. Right? Yeah, I, I guess some of you are thinking of converting, and I want to encourage you to do so. With one caveat, try to avoid the three A's, apostasy, adultery, and accessorizing. <laughs> I, personally, I'm not religious, but those of you who know me well know that I'm intensely spiritual. <laughs> 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 
personal trainer, Jose Maria Juan Carlos Jesus Espinosa. <laughs> I call him Chewy. He calls me Madre Hermosa. Is that sweet or what? Yeah. I told him, I said, Chewy, you got six months to get rid of this flag. After that, plan B kicks in. Piercings with leg. <laughs> you go for it, wouldn't you? Lady in the back? Yeah. Okay, so um, that was Wednesday. Thursday, I'm working on volume seven of my memoir called Near Life Experience. <laughs> I wanted to call it Trivial Pursuit, but Parker Brothers beat me to the point. Yeah. So anyway, um, Friday? Pardon? What did you do on Friday? Oh, Friday, thank you so much. Friday, after a hectic week, I try to have lunch with someone and relax, have a massage, you know. Okay, so that's my week. So, um, did I introduce everybody that's here tonight? Uh, Herb Wilson can't take any more of your tax stuff. He's too busy. <laughs> okay, so um, let me tell you this. I haven't converted yet but I'm seriously thinking about it. I wanted to get the bad stuff over with first, you know, the female genital mutilation. <laughs> so I, I found an imam in Toluca, and he, you know, he took a look down there, and he assures me that I'm sufficiently mutilated. <laughs> I am sufficiently mutilated to satisfy the requirements, the most demanding requirements of any jihadi terrorist who might be interested in marrying me. So I do feel better about that. Such a beautiful face. Anyway, I know a lot of you are worried about the Trump presidency, and I want to entreat you to look on the bright side. Something good could come of this. It already has, actually. I was reading in Psychology Today that there's a new treatment plan for people like Trump. It's called growth therapy. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was devised by a Muslim here in Mexico. His name is Muhammad Abdul Hamid Lopez Garcia. <laughs> it's done in three stages. First is deep breathing. Okay. Second is tapping. <laughs> and third is they cut the hand off at the wrist. <laughs> now, it's proved to be very effective. <laughs> so, um, I really want to thank you folks. You've been better to me than my own family. <laughs> it's not saying a hell of a lot. <laughs> so, 
I just want to ask you, before you leave the theater tonight, men, would you look deep in your pockets and ladies in your purses? And if you have any lint that you don't have, <laughs> there's a can in the lobby. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. Have, have a good evening. And as we say in Miami Beach, Allahu Akbar. <laughs>